Legend. Everybody who's present here, including our set cameraman, is wearing safety glasses to protect your eyes. In fact, uh, this is corrosive to skin, but only mildly corrosive to skin in the concentrations you're likely to be exposed to it, and the main danger is eyes. Okay, finally, we're going to focus on this last uh, can of the camera and focus on the water while I get ready to throw it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Don't breathe yet. Get the ones on the water. See the mm -hmm. ones on the water that are flaming? See the one over there left? Oh, the no, ones. No. Mm -hmm. uh. <coughs> okay, you know. White flames just you know, erupted like a, like a mushroom type cloud, you know, great big boom. Captain Savantix has few good options. Foam is no better than water, and letting the fire burn out risks a city-wide cataclysm. The captain decides to use the only weapon in his arsenal. He has no other choice. The only way to control it is with uh, large amounts of water. To do that, you're going to get a violent reaction for a while from the magnesium. And that is an understatement because water from the remote control fire trucks sparks a barrage of incredible explosions. Finally, 10,000 gallons of water per minute overcomes the explosions and the fire begins to subside. There were no injuries to civilians or to any of the dedicated firefighters. For Captain Savantix, that is the mark of a job well done. My goal always is to come back to the fire station with the same number of firefighters I left with. That's not only my goal, that's my responsibility. It's amazing nobody was hurt. Mother Nature did lend a helping hand. A steady breeze kept the chemicals away from the firefighters, eliminating serious respiratory hazards. We'll be right back. I are racing to stop a crisis in Texarkana. Families there are on alert because deadly chemicals are missing in this small Arkansas town. It's been almost a month now. Extras David Jackson traveled into the hot zone and found this serious health risk began with a silly teenage prank. Texarkana, Arkansas, where life often moves like molasses, a tiny town nestled on the Texas-Arkansas state line, quiet, calm, and serene. But these days, everywhere you look in this small town, you see yellow. Houses, backyards, even the local sandwich shop, all cordoned off with a taped warning. All because a boyish prank has turned Texarkana into a toxic hotspot. It was just out, you know, and just sitting on the table and, you know, just like calling her names, you know. Justin Calhoun and seven of his friends wandered into this abandoned neon sign plant three weeks ago, unaware of the danger lurking inside. They made what they thought was the coolest of finds, Quicksilver. But unknown to them, it's a deadly substance, also known as mercury. Immediately, the mercury became a problem because it looks like fun. It's a liquid that doesn't leave anything wet. You can actually plunge your arm down into it and bring your arm back out, and you're left with a dry arm. The problem is you're also left with a toxic arm that can kill you. But that's exactly what the teenagers did. They dipped their arms in the silvery stuff and reportedly even laced cigarettes with it and then smoked them. They packed 28 pounds of the toxin in pint-sized jars, took it home, and passed it around among their friends. Justin Calhoun, who hid 21 pounds in his house, seems a little bit dazed in this, his first interview since the chemical crisis. He told me it's a result of the 19 pills he's taking every day to curb the horrible side effects of mercury poisoning. Sick, uh, throwing up, uh, headaches, I, my eyes mess up sometimes. Uh, my fingers and toes are numb. The teens had no idea the old neon plant was now a potential death trap. 
It had been a sign of life in the 60s, harboring newspapers dating back to 1967, but it was also filled to the ceiling with paints and poisons of all kinds. The boys told me they were completely unaware the liquid metal commonly found in thermometers can cause speech and learning disabilities, as well as irreversible nerve damage. Texarkana Emergency Management Coordinator Dave Hall says sickness spread like wildfire throughout the community, fed by the toxic vapors of the large quantity of mercury. We have uh, tested approximately 170 people uh, by checking their clothes, shoes with meters. Those that tested positive, we've referred uh, 42 of them for blood and urine test of those 42 we now have six under physician's care including young justin whose mother cheryl is overcome with fear about the health of her son well, yeah, i just absolutely keep thinking i'm going to wake up one morning and all this will be a dream but it's not a dream and texarkana residents cannot escape the harsh reality as hazardous material teams now move in changing the pace of this tranquil town they're frantically scouring the community for the missing mercury. So far, they've recovered only 25 of the 28 pounds the teenagers took. And the boys' families have been forced from their own homes, while decontamination teams work to salvage what they can. Still, many in this quiet community are plagued by questions more than just sickness. Like why the neon plant, which was condemned last March, still housed such poisons, including black powder and nitroglycerin the explosive element in dynamite. Well, I just feel like the boys were lucky to get out of there without blowing that end of the town up or something, you know. I mean, it's, it's just not their, all their fault. Hmm. And by the way, the property owner refuses to comment on why the poisons weren't removed when the neon plant was abandoned 30 years ago.